Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for watching this video. In Oneness, we are Jess and Abe. So a lot has been happening over the past couple of days. And at first I wasn't really gonna talk about this portal of energy that we're in because I didn't know much about it. But yesterday I actually flew into New York City. I'm gonna be here for this whole week. And it kind of dawned on me like, is it a coincidence that I'm here in New York City for the exact same time frame that this intense portal of energy is available to us? So last night I was sitting at the Starbucks and <laughs> I had this overwhelming wave of energy. And so I got out my laptop and I kind of was like, what is happening? What's going on? Um, if we're in this portal of energy, what, what does this portal of energy mean? And I'm going to kind of read to you what came to me because I wrote down everything that I was kind of feeling, all the information that came to me after I asked that question and sort of things unfolded. And this also kind of brings me to another topic, which is the topic of channeling. And it's been brought forward to me a while ago, actually, when I first started bringing forward information from Abraham. I asked, "Am I? is this channeling information? What is this? And they kind of told me this whole thing about how channeling is gonna start changing and evolving and more and more people will be able to bring forward information. It's, it's like gonna have a disconnect from channeling because we won't see it as bringing in an entity separate from ourselves. It's just gonna be an integration of us in the physical with the higher energies, with the higher frequencies, with the higher dimensional beings, whatever you connect with. So I wanna talk about this sort of evolution of the term quote unquote channeling. So actually let's talk about that first before we get into what this energy portal is about. Um, so when I first started bringing information forward from Abe, I asked them if I was channeling information, if I would be a vessel to channel information. And they said that I was bringing forward information from basically my higher self being that higher aspect, that Abe, Abraham aspect here where I am. And if, you know, we've been talking about timelines, everything is existing all at once. So you being able to bring in your higher self or yourself in the future with more expansive knowledge into where you are right now, that is fully possible. It's not impossible because everything is connected. So when I bring forward information from Abe, it's like bringing forward information from myself. When we start to step into our higher dimensional selves in 5D, raising our frequency, opening up our consciousness, we're gonna start connecting to our higher self, the higher aspect of who we are, our future selves, our star families, whoever, whatever you wanna connect with from that more ascended perspective and viewpoint and consciousness. When you do that, it's more of like a merging with your higher self. And this is also why it's good to listen to my last video about how to connect to your higher self, because as we step into 5D, as you raise your consciousness, you are actually stepping into more of your higher self. It's not your higher self being separate from you. It is your higher self being more connected to you in the physical. So we have to stop seeing ourselves as separate from our higher self or separate from your star families or separate from your future self because then you can't make that connection. You cannot connect with all of these different aspects of who you are. In your ascension process, you have to start to understand your connection to all things. So honestly, I have no idea what this is called in terms of bringing forward the information. I had always just thought of myself as bringing forward this information or being this vessel in which I'm able to channel, technically channel the information that I'm receiving, but I'm still very much conscious and aware. So this is kind of showing me that integration of receiving the information, relaying the information, where you are just sort of merged with the higher aspect of who you are and sort of receiving the information in like the way that I describe it is it's like a stream of information that comes to me when I'm able to open up and ask a question or, you know, open up, tap into Abe 
And what they've shown me is that as you integrate more and more with the higher aspect of you, you just become that aspect. You become your higher self. I will integrate more of Abe energy to the point where, in essence, I just become Abe. We are one. We are connected. So it won't be so much of me seeing Abe as separate from me like I often do now, but I'm starting to realize more and more of that integration, like that we are one. So it's like just trusting in the information that you're receiving when you know that you're connected to your higher self. Because the information doesn't come from outside of you, it comes from within you. I had a friend who asked about when we step into 5D and we fully merge or merge more with our higher selves so that we are actually integrated with our higher selves in our physical, how does channeling work? How does it work when we bring in, you know, there are some channelers who can tap into other dimensional beings, um, other star beings, um, elementals, you know, stuff like that. How does that work? When I asked Abe that, you know, they, sh they showed me in the future in 5D, fully integrated with Abe energy, and then they showed me on the telephone. So it's like, you're just, it's like calling a friend when you want to speak to your galactic star families or any other being that you connect with. You just simply tap into it and receive the information from where you are. And it's like, sort of like how I receive Abe energy right now. It's not necessarily channeling because I'm still here, I'm still fully conscious. I'm just receiving the information like I'm on a telephone call with them and then relaying the information. It's like a greater download of information. A lot of people in the physical, because they're still very much conscious and aware, they dismiss those types of information downloads that come to them when they should be tapping into it and strengthening it and honing it. When they ask a question and information is brought to them in like a stream of information, a download, they should acknowledge that it's coming from their higher self, from the greater aspect of them, but also not just information downloads, not just streams of information. So this encompasses synchronicities as well. Like when you ask a question, and you're connected to your higher self, when you're integrated, the answers show up in your awareness. It might not be a stream of information right away. It could be synchronicities being placed within your path, on your path. For example, today, I had a question about ladybugs because I had been seeing ladybugs a lot, especially after my last one of my last videos when I was talking about ladybugs and they started showing up all over the place. And today I walked into a store randomly and I saw a scarab pendant. And something connected me with this scarab pendant. And then the ladybugs flashed into my head. So I made the connection. I'm like, why is the ladybugs information coming to me right now? Why am I looking at this scarab pendant? Does it have something? Are they connected in some way? Then the information started coming to me like the ladybug is within the same family as the scarab. The scarab, um, the pendant that I saw had like some information on it, which talked about what the scarab meant in terms of connecting to Ra, connecting to the sun. Um, and I've actually been connecting a lot with Ra lately, so it's no wonder why the ladybugs in my awareness also connect with Ra in this way of like being sort of the manifestation of the scarab in my awareness, in my physical reality at this moment to connect, to make that connection for me with Ra. Um, but that's funny how I was led to my answer after I asked the question, very soon after I asked the question. So this is about being integrated with your higher self as one, being merged with your higher self so that you are living with the energy, like embodying the energy of your higher self so that you are more connected to that higher consciousness all the time. And that's what we're stepping into as we move into 5D. 
It's not separate, it's connected. It's the merging of energy between you and your higher self or you and whatever energy you connect with. So when I first started bringing forward information from Abe and I had that question about whether I'm a channeler or what is this, what's happening, they had told me that the essence of channelers, like that, whatever channeling is, is going to be shifting. So it's not that I should identify with being a channeler because it's not necessarily channeling in the way that we perceive it here right now. Because it's like right now here in the 3D physical, in order to bring forward this information from the higher dimensions and the higher frequencies, we have to get to a point where we can sort of put our 3D minds and consciousness aside in order to receive the higher energy and information. As we start to ascend, the idea or concept of channeling will start to change to the point where we're not connecting or feeling like we're connecting from to something that's outside of us. We are connecting within us. So it becomes very much more of a natural thing where we're just receiving information in this stream-like way versus needing to kind of take the time to connect, you know, tap into the energy we want to channel and bring that forward. Or even how there are some trans channelers who completely get out of the way and allow that energy or being to take over them where they don't remember. Like that's, I feel like that's, we're going to start stepping away from that and have it be more of, us bringing in the information in a more conscious way where we're just integrating with and merging with that higher energy. So that's something to keep in mind on your journey as you start to integrate more of your higher self. A lot of people think, you know, I'm not a channeler, I don't know how to do that. But you are becoming more of that integration with your higher self. So the name, the term channeling or channeler is just a label. It's just a label is what's coming to me it doesn't it's not it doesn't encompass what's happening as we shift it's it's old is what i'm hearing it's old so we have to start thinking in a way that us receiving the information from the higher dimensions and higher frequency is just going to be a natural flow and integration and merge with who we are as we ascend our physical selves And I bring this forward because I've been noticing this sort of change in my channeling as well to the point where it's like I'm just receiving these downloads of information and I feel like I'm, I I never connected to being a channeler in the first place, but it it was more like trying to understand what was happening. And um, I think like the way that I started in terms of receiving information I was using some tools to help me, like an alphabet board and everything. Um, I don't like to recommend that to everyone because you have to be at a very high frequency to bring in your higher self or the higher um, energies of light. A lot of people who use alphabet boards and stuff like that or tools sometimes are vibrating at lower frequencies so they can bring in lower energies. Um... But I think that the way that I started bringing in information and shifting into the writing of information, I think, was a way for me to connect to the energy of Abe that was coming through. And it's possible it may be like that for you as well, so that you can sort of understand the energy that you're bringing through, understand and connect to your higher self a little bit better or connect to higher dimensional beings that you may connect more strongly to. Um, But I think maybe this is like a progression of how you connect to that greater aspect of you or what this relationship was. I needed to know who I was or who was coming through, what energy was coming through. I needed to know You know, I I did all sorts of things to test things and to make sure that the energy that was coming through was actually that energy. Um, So there's a lot of things that you're going to probably have to do 
when you start connecting with your higher self or the higher energy that you connect with. And I know that Abe wants to bring forward information about how to connect more with your higher self, how to actually start merging and like fully living integrated with your higher self or bringing that more into your life. Um, Okay, nope, never mind. (laughs) Abe is telling me right now that um, they're focused on bringing forward information or bringing forward knowledge of lost knowledge. So they want to help others bring forward your lost knowledge. Um, Have everyone start to open up their lost knowledge. Where that's going to lead, even I'm kind of in the dark about that. I'm just allowing things to unfold. But main mission of Abe is to help you bring forward your lost knowledge. They're saying that in order to do that, however, you have to learn and know how to connect to your higher self, the higher aspect of you, the higher energy that you most connect to on a soul level. So we have to do that work first before bringing forward the lost knowledge. And they're wanting me sort of indirectly to help you connect with your higher self. And that's done through energetic integration, through these videos. Um, Integration is happening, like I've said in multiple videos, that even if you don't understand the videos, you're integrating the energy on a much deeper level to help you in your processing journey. And also, it's like, by me sharing information, it sort of unlocks things in the viewers or the listeners to kind of dig up your own lost knowledge, whether it's, you know, needing to first release things and kind of help to clear the path for you to retrieve your lost knowledge, which includes that releasing and letting go of old energies um, and the integration with your higher self. So there's a lot, there's a lot of things that go into this. It's a process. Um, They want me to help and work with other people much more often, which is why I'm also trying to open up a Patreon page to kind of um, gather people together so that we can start to really dig deeper, dive deeper into topics, um, open up lost knowledge, connect to the higher self. Again, it's a whole process. Things are unfolding as I'm living it, so we'll see how, how things go. They're saying lost knowledge is key to the ascension process. Retrieving your lost knowledge is key to our shifting out of 3D and starting to integrate more fully into 5D, making 5D our physical reality. Lost knowledge is key. And another thought is like, I still see Abe as sort of separate from me. I do feel the integration. I do feel the merging happening as we speak. Again, it's a process, but at the same time, as I shift more into fully integrating Abe energy, it's almost like Abe is, I know that it's connected. I know that it's integrated with me as you will feel with your higher self or higher energies or higher beings, but it's still sort of separate, if you know what I mean, which is why I still identify Abe as Abe, as like a separate energy, even though I know that it's fully connected with me. It is me and and it is merging with me. So I don't know. We'll see how that unfolds. <laughs> Until then, you know, it's just an Abe. It's, it's, I'm receiving my information. Um, but it's nice. It's nice to feel like there's this higher aspect of you that's fully on your side and that's helping you along, even though it is you, even though it is fully um, connected to you. I'm going to read to you information about what I received when I tapped into what's happening with this portal of energy. And this kind of explains sort of that integration of energy and integration or receiving of downloads um, as I was sitting in the Starbucks. So maybe this brings it into more or a better perspective for you in your own personal process and journey in tapping into your higher self and sort of merging with that energy of receiving that stream 
of information in a very natural and normal way. I said, what's going on? What's happening with this energy? And I'm going to read exactly how I felt, what came to me as I was typing. So I wrote, a lot of things are converging this week, November 5th to 11. Intense energy, strong synchronicities, strong energy points, quote unquote meeting points for many people, a culmination of energy on 11-11, November 11th. Then twin flames popped into my head. I wrote, no coincidence why I'm in New York City, November 5th to 11. It was a last minute trip. Strong opening of energy on the airplane as I, as I was coming here. I started to remember Lemuria and Atlantis. I started to remember who I was in Lemuria and the knowledge that I held. This was the start of that huge energy that started coming to me and I was like, something's happening this week. I noticed this strong connection to people, placement on earth, lineage, bloodlines, strongly tied to their lives on Lemuria and or Atlantis. And on that plane ride, I started releasing hindrances that I had from Lemuria. Then I wrote, energy portal, November 5th to 11. I wrote, what is happening? What does this mean? Then what came to me was twin flame reunion, but more than a twin flame reunion. Intensive time for release and remembrance. Jessica felt it on the airplane, making way for remembering lost knowledge, retrieving lost knowledge. Release of hindrances need to happen first for the individual. Energy of twin flame hearts are preparing for reuniting, preparing for joining hearts together. Remembering or retrieving lost knowledge goes hand in hand with reuniting with twin flames on the planet. Strong energy portal or this open energy portal are for those who are ready energetically to reunite with their twin flames. It does not mean physical reunion just yet, maybe for some, this energy portal is about preparing individual hearts and energy for twin flame reunion. For those of you who do not have twin flames, this strong energy portal is still open for you in a very strong way for you to connect with your hearts. So it's you connecting with your inner heart. Energy offered to release what does not serve you and integrate more of this open creative energy of love and oneness finding the love within yourself finding the wholeness within yourself as twin flames their hearts create the wholeness but each of them have to be whole as well and within you if you don't have a twin flame you are creating the wholeness within yourself so this is very much an energetic portal for you to activate and reunite with the heart within you opening your heart to love and oneness, or powerfully taking those steps for you to open your heart to love and oneness. Then um, Abe brought forward this information for me, a remembering a memory in terms of my own personal experience. What came through was Jessica united with her twin flame on 11, 11, 10, November 11th, 2010. At that time, they were not quite ready for each other. When twin flames unite and are not energetically ready for each other, it can join in destructive energy rather than creative energy. So this portal, this November 5th to 11th portal, must be, it has to be like an energetic portal that happens every year, especially surrounding the 1111 portal. What came through was twin flame energy is very strong, same soul in two different bodies, reflection of each other, mirrors of each other. If you are not whole, the other is not whole. You must come together in wholeness to achieve wholeness together. If there are hindrances within any one of you, the hindrances will grow stronger. Must do individual work first and then come together. Otherwise, hindrances are activated and strengthened or amplified in the mirror of each other. It is ideal if both of you are whole before coming together. 
This is why many twin flames do not, or choose not, to come together until later on in life. It's also possible for a peaceful reunion if one twin is able to hold love and oneness despite the other twin not being there yet. One twin can hold the wholeness, love and oneness for both twins or for both people. This allows the other to continue to evolve and grow in the quote unquote safe space of the other twin who can hold that love and oneness space not in a destructive space, which happens if both of you are not whole, if both of you still have hindrances. Jessica's union with her twin on 11 11 10 ended in destruction a few years after. Energy was too strong. Many hindrances activated in each other, mostly in Jessica, needed to be released. Twins activate hindrances in each other in order to help each other release what doesn't serve them so that they can integrate more oneness and love as a whole unit together. Purpose of twin flames is to bring forward love in each other, real love, deep love, love and oneness in each other. The soul created a twin flame in knowing that they would need that other person to help bring up the love and oneness in each other in this lifetime. They knew that they would not be able to do it themselves in the incarnation. So as a soul before incarnating, you knew the layout of your life. You knew the struggles that you would have to go through and what would be sort of unfolding for you. And if on a soul level, you knew that it's possible because you wouldn't remember who you were and stuff like that, that you would need your twin flame to be there to help remind you of your journey, of your path of your mission to help bring out the love within you. So in knowing that beforehand, you created a twin flame or you created each other to help each other on that path. Um, What had come up is like to help each other bring out the love because it's so necessary during this exact time and this exact shift to bring out the love in your hearts, whether you have a twin flame or not. We have to activate that love and oneness. So in this incarnation, knowing that that this whole big shift was taking place too and that we needed to activate love and oneness, if you saw in your lifetime that it would be hard for you, you created your twin flame. Also why many people on the planet have twin flames at this time, because we need to activate that love and oneness to raise the love and oneness on the planet. Next thing that came through was that not everyone has a twin flame. Some have soulmates. Those who do not have twin flames probably did not need the other person to help them bring up that love and oneness in their heart. The destruction of energy between Jessica and her twin flame offered a time for Jessica to connect even further and deeper to her inner growth, ascension, and integration with Abe energy. It opened her strongly to manifestation energy and empowerment as a creator being that time is that time being separated from her twin flame. It allowed Jessica to take the steps and get on the path of opening her heart and stepping into her highest purpose. Then it came to me, timeline shift. So it was me stepping into a different timeline, stepped into her higher timeline. Reunited with twin on 11-06-2014, twin flame, another twin flame portal stronger unification this time around. Jessica was in her highest timeline of holding love and oneness, so she was able to hold that unconditional love and oneness for both her and her twin, despite being on the path of still healing and releasing old wounds when they reunited. Shifting into higher timeline of peace, love, and oneness allowed both of them to come together again in a way that they would grow together and activate energy in each other in a creative, helpful way rather than in a destructive way and would help each other to step into each other's highest purpose, path, and mission while bringing out the unconditional true love in each other. Strong energy for twin flames to reunite, meaning this portal of 11-5 to 11-11 with culmination on 1111 is a strong energy for twin flames to reunite or prepare their hearts for reuniting in the future. 
I also made a strong connection that I was born within this twin flame portal. And I asked, does this have significance? And what came through was love and oneness. Jessica has always held love and oneness in the physical, born in the energy of love and oneness, this portal of energy. She takes love and oneness with her wherever she goes. Twin flame portal is a strong portal of love and oneness. It is in the strong love and oneness energy that twin flames are energetically, magnetically attracted to each other or attracted to that energy of bringing it out in your heart. So preparing your heart energetically to receive your twin, to join hearts with your twin. Twin flame unification can happen anytime, but it's very strong during this twin flame portal of 11-5 to 1111. Again, it doesn't necessarily mean a physical reuniting between twin flames, but it's very much that energetic preparation um, energy that's being offered for any twins who are not together, who are not united, to very much prepare energetically in their hearts so that they can do the work to clear and release for them to then join hearts in the near future. So that was interesting, and um, I just kind of wanted to demonstrate all of that came to me when I was sitting at the Starbucks, like sh a stream of information. Um, maybe I w I'm not in that place to like put it out in, an, in a more eloquent way as it would come out normally when I'm at home alone, but even in the hustle and bustle of being in your everyday normal life, you can still receive all of this information. And this, I think, is what Abe and I really want to relay to you in terms of connecting to the, sh the higher and stronger aspect of you as you move into your 5D bodies, your 5D realities, and your 5D consciousness. Um, so that's really exciting. And also, I think this is coming to me because many of you are stepping into this space. So I think maybe they're just trying to remind you that the information you're getting is very natural and normal and you are still connecting with that higher aspect of you. It's, it's the merge. It's the merging with your higher self. So that's it that I have for this video. Until next time, Jess and Abe leave you in oneness and love.